Don't get me wrong, for £65 at the time of filming, if you want a new CPU for your parents' home PC or maybe a beginner gaming CPU, then AMD's new Athlon 3000G is pretty hard not to recommend. It's a dual core, so nothing really amazing, but does have SMT, meaning four threads, a decent enough base and boost clock, and uh, like I said, for the price, it's certainly not bad. To give you some context here, despite being being named 3000 and 3000 series, it's not actually third gen Ryzen equivalent, it's not Zen 2 architecture, it's actually Zen Plus equivalent to second gen Ryzen, similar to the 2200G but with a slightly toned down graphics unit and obviously dual core with hyper threading or SMT rather than quad core. It's also basically just a refresh of the 240GE from the last generation with the notable exception that this is now unlocked, meaning not only can you overclock it which you won't find too much of a margin for, but more specifically, you can set your RAM to its proper speed. So say 3000 or 3200 megahertz, which can see a decent improvement depending on the application. Now I tested the CPU for both productivity and gaming with both the integrated graphics and a discrete graphics card to show you how it compares to the rest of the market. Now with those productivity numbers, let's start off with the synthetic tests like Cinebench. We're looking at a overall decent performance here, especially for the price, with the multi-threaded score being I think 872, which is actually pretty low for, for a multi-threaded score, but on the single-threaded side you're seeing 334, which is actually pretty good for single-threaded performance. In my usual 10-minute Premiere test render, it took around 50 minutes and 34 seconds to render that clip out, which is kind of as you'd expect, three times slower than Ryzen 3600X, which obviously has three times more cores and threads than it. In the Blender BMW test scene, that one took 16 minutes and 45 seconds. Again, pretty slow by comparison. Gaming wise, on the integrated graphics, you're not going to have a good time. The best case scenario is that you set everything to 720p low settings and you might just about get 30fps average in games like PUBG and Apex Legends, with the minimums there being as low as 20 or 22, which certainly isn't great. Now Fortnite here is the exception to the rule, having about 110 FPS average with a minimum of about 70 or so, but that is actually with their render scale set to 66%, so you, while you will get good FPS, it's kind of hard to make, well, anything out. Gaming on a dedicated GPU is definitely a better experience. I was testing with an RTX 2080 Ti here, which I know is definitely overkill, but it allows me to use some of my previous numbers to give you a rough idea of how the CPU compares to other rivals. Obviously more expensive rivals, but rivals nonetheless. With that said, the gaming performance you're going to see is generally speaking about half the performance of something like a Ryzen 3600X, admittedly for just a third of the price. Starting off with Apex Legends, this is at 1080p on very high settings, and as you'd expect with my kind of bad comparison, the 3000G is the slowest of the bunch. The closest comparison I have is the 2700X, which is the same architecture, and that chip is about 50% faster. It's actually a very similar story when it comes to PUBG as well, again on uh, ultra settings, and you, again we're seeing a very similar FPS number for actually both the 3000G and the 2700X, with that chip being about 50% faster, and obviously the 9900K being about 100% faster. When it comes to Fortnite though, on epic settings, the 3000G kind of lacks a little here, as the 2700X manages to be a full 100% faster than the 3000G, which is a noticeable difference. So why is this video titled Terrible But Brilliant? Well, on the one hand, this is a great CPU. You get some decent performance overall, especially considering the price, if you're more looking for a productivity kind of CPU. And even on the gaming side of things, with a discrete graphics card, it certainly functions fine, so it's certainly not a, a terrible option. With that said, there is some stiff competition on the market, even at this price point, even new with something like the Ryzen 1200, which is obviously a couple of generations old now, but you can still buy them brand new for basically the same price as this Athlon 3000G, and you would get four real cores rather than two and some SMT added, so you'll get a pretty much better experience across the board for gaming or productivity. Where the competition gets even stiffer is from the used market. Now I appreciate a lot of people aren't comfortable with buying from the used market, and that's why 
why I mentioned the Ryzen 1200 first, but if you are comfortable going there, you can get some incredible deals on stuff like older Intel i5s, like the 4670K, which will give you a significant more performance both in games and in productivity tasks, again for basically the same price. Now of course on that route you don't have the same upgrade path as if you went with an Athlon where you can use a B450 board, but if you're using that argument then you should just go with the Ryzen 1200 because you have the same upgrade path there. With that said, I do want to make a note that most X570 motherboards will not support the Athlon 3000G, so do bear that in mind if you're planning on using this as a very beginner CPU, but you know, planning on picking up something else later. So I think the conclusion here is that if you are already looking at the Athlon 240GE as your next chip, then the 3000GE seems like a no-brainer. It's cheaper than last generation while being unlocked, and the slightly better architecture design, and so you get a little bit more performance and generally speaking, if you're already in that market, this is a great option. With that said, there does seem to be some pretty stiff competition around the market depending on what you're after, and so do shop around first before making your buying decision. Now, with all of that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of the Athlon 3000G? Is it something you'd pick up yourself? And if so, what sort of use case would you go for that over something like the Ryzen 1200 or used i5s? Anything at all, let me know in those comments down below. Now, if you want to pick up your own Athlon 3000G or check out pricing when and where you watch this, because it can vary take a look at the top link in the description down below. It's an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store and you can see all of that information. And if you want to support the channel in more ways than just watching these videos and of course subscribing for more videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, then you can check out the rest of the links in the description down below too. There's a load of stuff down there. There's Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links, which don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. Or there's also stuff like merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of cool new designs, including some designs hopefully you've already seen, so do check those out. And there's also Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming with, well, Streamlabs OBS, or Private Instant Access, which is a great and cheap VPN. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Feel free to check out some more videos over there. And otherwise, feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video.